Sir, your puppy's cock is that. way out. <laughs> Let me turn on, sir. In public, your pu your puppy's boner is out. In public. In public. <laughs> <laughs> we have fun we have fun on shows how do i turn off all of my notifications including my messages <laughs> because what's happening is um you're gonna you're seeing my messages in your screen here and boy oh boy oh, no. is that gonna be here we go here we go none there we go allow my there it is done off over dumb you hear Alana doing the dishes? Uh-huh. <laughs> Good. Um Sorry. Dude, no. I'm in such a good mood today. So Can't am I. nobody I'm break a mic. I'm in a great <laughs> nobody. Nobody. Guys, welcome to the show. Yeah, no. Mike, I'm recording. Did you know? No, but I assumed after you said welcome to the show that something was <laughs> happening. Something was afoot. Something was a myth. Let me let me adjust some things here from uh, so that Ryan uh, has a great time making this. Let's have this. Sound. Can't nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, how are you, buddy? You said you're feeling great. I feel good. I'm today. actually in a very very good mood. It is a new week. It is a new week. High five from Alana. It's a new week. On Thursday. Which is now where I choose to begin the week. And time is <laughs> horse shit now. So I'm choosing. Me, you, and Alana are choosing to start our weeks now on Thursday. <laughs> you know, everything's topsy-turvy now. So I think we could totally get away with that. Yeah. We could just yeah, suggest that fun. Thursday is the, is the new Monday. That's my that's on Netflix well, you now. Did you know that? that? Then people will, will go into it with a Monday mentality. You have to say Thursday's the new start to the week. And honestly, I wouldn't be very happy if Garfield suddenly said he hated Thursdays. That's not going to make me happy. <laughs> Is Garfield still alive, you think? Because in my mind, there's <laughs> no way a cat with dietary habits such as him who's I, been around for as long as he has is still alive i saw a meme that was like Judy garfield is definitely the kind of cat that you have to like give shots to <laughs> for sure you have to go, you have to you have to hide john's garfield hiding pills in his Alabama. lasagna John is dig is digging the prescription pills into the lasagna, and Garfield has no idea. <laughs> oh man, what's today Monday? Like he's bummed out that it's Monday, I and then hate. his little paw goes over to his his pills case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Monday. just it's Garfield holding the 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 weekly pill case, and the Monday one is open, <laughs> and it's just him looking straight to camera. <laughs> it doesn't even need and to then say in Tuesdays, way. like just as a visual gag, uh -huh. you see that Tuesday has like a little lasagna. In it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just for the super fans. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, I see. Yeah, I saw a meme the other day that was like, uh, it was. It's like uh, John from Garfield at the at at the vet. Oh, and mm -hmm. the vet's like, what are you feeding this cat, sir? <laughs> <laughs> John's like, I mean, lasagna, he loves it. And the doctor's like, you're going to have to stop doing that or he's going to die. <laughs> or something Please. like that. You care about this cat. If you love your friend, you, you should stop. stop. <laughs> if you love your friend <laughs> if you truly want your pet to live <laughs> you will stop eating it cheese regatta cheese stop giving over him. and over <laughs> you can't give a cat Show, sir 
you can't give it. Show me that you love your pet. <laughs> Prove it to me. Honestly, <laughs> you. I'm, we're gonna have to come. You're gonna have to come back. Like in a few months, we're gonna have to monitor your cat. You. Um, honestly, I'm glad you brought him in when you did. Well, um. Well, yeah, I brought him in because he it's, it's, he doesn't seem to be. He doesn't seem to be <laughs> playing around as much. <laughs> Well, I saw. I mean, he just it was, doesn't seem to have the energy. It was really cute that you were carrying him in, but now I know why you were carrying him in. He won't move unless I carry him. When there was only one set of footprints, move. that's when you were carrying him. Sixty-seven-year-old <laughs> <laughs> cat. <laughs> Poor Garfield. I, he's, Holy shit. Garfield can eat whatever the fuck he wants. He ain't real. Yeah, he a tune or CGI. Like, are you worried about Homer on... Simpson's health? No, not for a long time. Are you worried about not for uh, pa- Peter Griffin? No, those boys are. Those... I assume that he'd be killed by sleep apnea at some point. <laughs> His heart would stop in the middle of the night. Yeah, he talks like he has sleep apnea. <laughs> uh, Lois. <laughs> I'm talking to my dog. Uh, okay, I'm so sleepy today for some reason. Um, I'm Peter Griffin. I'm Peter Griffin. I don't know how to. <laughs> uh, Mike, it's, uh, yeah. it's great to see you, and uh, we're where uh, the times are still a change in hopefully in our, in the world and things are still crazy and we're not stopping the fight, the good fight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fight for equality is everlasting. It's never ending. Um, and never we're, ending. we're, we stand behind those who are oppressed and are fighting for their rights and, uh, to be treated like human beings and so on and mm-hmm. so forth, as well as it's pride month. Right? Like, or it's Pride. Isn't Pride Month? Judges? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Where this weekend is like pri- the big Pride, um, like a parade, or, you know, people celebrate Pride in, in, uh, in their cities. And I think it's yeah. happening this weekend. And, but and also. A boom in the local feather manufacturing industry. Yes. It was feathers and lays. They really fu- see an uptick on sales. Boas are all feathers, right? Boas are all feathers. That's what a yeah. boa is. I think so. Yeah. That's yes. Nice. Um, but uh, you think there's like a, a company that's like big feather? You think there's one major feather manufacturing company? There might be like the oldest one, and. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the most trusted one, the one that, that everyone went to, like my daddy started, my grand, great granddaddy started that feather truck. My great company. Great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. feather, ca- the carriage feather company. The in My granddad started this company together. <laughs> Back in 1393, Marriage my father and his brother. <laughs> We were the first business. My dad opened the first feather business in 1393. Motherfucker, how old are you? If that's your dad and he did that in 1393. Um, this is the worst Garfield cartoon I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I bet there is big feather. There's big everything. We like. I like to go... I'll never forget when we did our live show and you read your Cloverfield theory on a dynamic banter live show we did at like the open space back when the we could be around humans. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. you re- read your conspiracy <laughs> about Cloverfield and then in there you mentioned Big Tabasco. <laughs> 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 and I'll yeah. never forget it because that's the funniest version of the big whatever <laughs> joke. <laughs> oh, that's I a good one. I was doing shows. I was I, I 
did a tweet today talking about stand up and something very specific I miss about stand up mm -hmm. is I was doing this thing where I would go to my friend who was waiting to go up next and I'd get real close to their ear and I'd say, Don't fuck it up, idiot. The king of Hollywood's watching. <laughs> <laughs> and was uh and, then, and and was um what there what's his name god damn it i can't think of his fucking name uh the weasel what's that guy's name oh paulie shore yeah was paulie shore in fact there because he's the king of hollywood <laughs> not, not every time <laughs> is he is that what he's known as i don't know i'm just i just think it's funny to call him that who do you think the is who is the king of Hollywood right now? You think it's like Leonardo DiCaprio or something? Big business. Big business. I don't know. Disney's the king of Hollywood. Know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, I miss I miss making jokes even. Like I feel like we've had to take a break from jokes because things are real serious. And uh and and last night, Mike and I unknowingly shared a wonderful experience that was a very necessary thing for me and Mike, apparently, which is wonderful to hear that you were also inspired. But um, yeah, but last night we watched uh, the state do like a reunion show, and it was for I'm charity. It was a Zoom reunion of the state, and. It sounds horrible, but it's it wasn't. It worked really well. And no, it's instantly. And it was like it was perfect. It was perfect. Like there were mm -hmm. a couple of hiccups here and there. Like Michael Showalter, like forgetting to unmute his mic or whatever. Mm -hmm. like, like sometimes somebody yeah, would forget to <laughs> in the middle of a sketch. <laughs> um, but. Uh, it was wonderful and really, really great. And they, they raised money for the NAACP, I think, I think or, or I can't remember what yeah, exact charity it was, but, other... but they mentioned the NAACP yeah. and they mm -hmm. did a charity of like a lot of the stuff from the show and their careers and, and things like that. And it was like, un auction, yeah. it was an auction, but the craziest thing about it was, was it was supposed to start at six o'clock and it did pretty much. And then, or six thirty or whatever last night, and then when they started the show, they mentioned that um, it was going to be like an hour or two and then maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more, you know, possibly. So they were going to do like an hour show of like sketches and stuff. And then they were going to do like another hour maybe of Q&A and the charity uh, auction. Um, and it, they ended up going for like three and a half hours, like almost right. Like it was like almost four hours or something. Yeah, they ended I didn't at stay nine. Through the whole thing. Like I stayed through the whole fucking thing, and it was like crazy. There, like the, there was like four yeah. people left at the end, and they were just talking to everybody, and they really like. It was amazing to see all of these familiar faces that we love so much that inspired us so much, older, but also like none of them have changed. They're all like as as hilarious as they were when they were like. 18 or yeah. however the fuck old they were when they did the state. You they know? discovered the, the secret to Hollywood, which the, the king doesn't tell you. You have to rip it out of them. You but have to it's earn to it. to be able to work with your friends. Yes, exactly. I think you that know? really it, is the key. There's so many people in this city that are incredibly, that are intolerable. Mm -hmm. 100%. <laughs> and to be able to work with your friends over and over again, is that's the the secret you know who i missed who i haven't fucking seen in a while is the um michael not michael jan michael nothing out with the beard the redhead guy. oh yeah kevin allison yeah 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 so fucking funny man so fucking so funny. funny one of the most unique like speaking voices i've ever heard yeah you're right. It's really his awesome. voice is his own. He's got like a Gilbert Gottfried like locked in voice of his own. Like not like it's not like, he has a, like a thespian. Yeah, it's His not grating or thespian. anything. Right, right, right. No, he he just has a. I've never heard anybody else have a have that like moniker. The way that he talks, it's really great. But uh, um, yeah. yeah, man, it was really great to see all of them, and it was really awesome. And they they did like a super awesome pre-recorded opening 
that um mm-hmm. and dude i saw the state i saw a reunion at ucb like i don't know 10 years ago or something i can't remember how long ago it was but my friend todd mm-hmm. is friends with joe latrulio and his wife beth and then todd like was like and he invited me because we're good friends and uh god this is so name droppy and gross but the point is is that he took me to see it because he knows someone he knows joe latrulio which was like blunt which blew my mind at the time because you know i'm just like it would for you mike we're big the state fans um but yeah we i went- might not talk about it and drop the name so much but <laughs> i would act the same way <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be dropping names like that, but I certainly would feel exactly the same. I'd maybe keep that as a memory that I had that maybe had a big effect on me. <laughs> you can keep some memories to yourself, I think. <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to talk about everything in your life. It's like we're putting things on Instagram with our voices right now. <laughs> We really are. It didn't happen no. unless you put it on Instagram. But uh and this was before <laughs> Instagram, all right, kids? So I walked through the snow to post photos of myself <laughs> <laughs> on the bulletin board in town. <laughs> and don't even get me started on that algorithm, huh? <laughs> I had to staple Michael Ian Black to a telephone pole <laughs> so people knew that we had an interaction once. <laughs> An animated GIF was a flip book that you stapled to the bulletin board in town. It, it was a An lot of work. animated GIF was what you saw in between flipping channels. <laughs> An animated GIF is what you saw when two pictures on the wall were really close to each other and you look at them real fast. <laughs> You had to watch someone take a picture and then play that memory back in your mind <laughs> over and over again. The uh, animated gift. So, uh, but I, I got to see them way back in the day, and they opened with this like incredible. They did a uh, corner of the or corner in the sky or whatever that song is from Pippin, the musical. And these guys mm-hmm. are like huge musical nerds too, and they love doing musical things. And we got to see a little bit of that in the show last night. But, but the reason why I'm bringing this up is because they did corner of the sky or whatever that song is from Pippin, and it was this like amazing performance on stage. And then, um, and then they opened the show, and it was like holy shit, that was fucking incredible. And they basically did the exact same kind of opening in on zoom and it worked so fucking well it was like they just started with a sketch a classic sketch the jew the italian and the redhead gay which is like such a fucking funny (laughs) sketch because (laughs) i'm gonna make a big pasta (laughs) sauce and i'm gonna (laughs) pick out some curtains for the apartment here (laughs) i'm making Mask, dude, I want my shit. It's so good. I'm making mask out of the out of the curtain material in the apartment. Ah, but so uh, funny. And I love the Italian is like, I gotta wipe down all my food before I make this pasta. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was great. And then they did like a big musical opening, and they all were included. And I guess they recorded it beforehand, and it was like this really amazing. It's like when the um, I don't know how they're doing it, but the the cool celebrities, not the tone deaf ones, but the cool celebrities have been doing like things like that, where they like all come together to make like a fun little thing, but it isn't like imagine, yeah. or they're just like cringily staring at the camera. I take responsibility. Anything that seems like this, there's a lot of effort that goes into it, I think it's way more. Um, like, well, you know, I think you're right. Tell I think you're right. I when totally, you, I totally when agree with that. spend a lot of time on something. Yeah. I, uh, especially something like that, There's, dude, you could fucking charge tickets, charge a price for tickets. This was different because it was for charity, but you could charge a ticket price and then just show up and then just do a conference call. No frills. Mm-hmm. And then that's it. Right. And you could do that. A lot of people would be fine with that. But to go above and beyond, like that's so fucking cool. And it's it, it's above what your expectations, 
I don't want to speak for everyone, but it was above what my expectations were for the thing. And I, as a fan of that, appreciate that so much. Dude, absolutely. 100% agreed with that. Um, we should we should discuss like a like something where I wonder if we could do dynamic banter live, like um, uh-huh. like on a Zoom call like that, and we could kind of charge like an admission that would go to a charity or something. Like we could. Well, we can keep some of it. Well, we have to keep some of it. <laughs> this is our time. Because I'm not a rich <laughs> television star like all these other people. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm fine with giving some money to her, but Papa's got to eat a <laughs> big <laughs> pop of sauce. <laughs> Papa's got to keep the internet going so that Papa can do the show. <laughs> Papa needs this pasta sauce in my vein. <laughs> Come on. How's, how else is Papa supposed to get the sauce in his veins? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Think about it. And exactly. You think it is a pasta sauce to grow on a tree? <laughs> so uh, the show was really great and amazing. And then they did like a bunch of sketches and it was great. And uh, But I didn't even know Mike was watching it. And I got a text from Mike and it was a screenshot of the stream. And then I sent him yeah. one. And it was just this moment of like connection connected connectivity that we were un- unaware of but it's also a reason why you and i became such great friends too is because we we really yeah uh related to each other's experiences a very similar experience of watching the state in our formative years yeah man and i had not was like really popular i didn't know anyone else who watched it and it was on mtv and they had a pilot i think on ABC or NBC or something like that. Mm-hmm. Don't want to drop too many company names. <laughs> um, Especially when all thinking of you in these trying times. <laughs> um, but uh, when I saw like those DVDs at your house or something like yeah. that, and I was like, oh, no fucking way. You watch this? And it was already after we had bonded so hard about uh, Cloverfield. Cloverfield. It's also, also very funny that me and you got as close as we did because are based on a television and a movie thing. <laughs> and then just over the years, I've become completely disconnected to a lot of that, <laughs> you know, but that was like the foundation of our friendship. Yeah. But, that's but I important. did want to say, I think we mentioned this last time we mentioned the state, but they did have a big effect on you your sense of humor and my sense of humor 100 percent, and how we connect having i was watching it last night and i was like the fact that me and steve have even a fraction of this on other people makes me think that like uh any dream that i had of becoming an entertainer of a as a younger kid has become realized And I felt like, obviously, there's varying levels of success, but I do feel like we're in this group with somebody like the state where you have some kind of like comedic influence uh, over like a small group of people to a lot. And I'm very lucky to have that, you know? 100%. It's such a cool, like, uh, special thing that grew out of a a very genuine, cool, special thing. So um, I was thinking of that last night while I was watching it and just being very thankful for the, we've been lucky enough to gather here. Yeah. It is interesting how people find uh, each other based on those types of interests. And especially since before, when before the internet was a thing, when people could like somehow, connect uh, on some like really strange cultish thing like mystery science theater 3000 or the state or whatever you know a lot of, there's so many things like that and even now with the internet there's a lot of people that n- never saw the state don't know what that is and are probably still confused about who the fuck we're even talking about but the state is built up is a comedy troupe that is comprised of people that you've seen you've definitely seen at one point or another. Like, you know, people yeah. Or the wet on American summer people. Yes. 
you know, they pop up all over the place. Yeah, they, but also the state in every, like, a lot it, of stuff. It's it's a placeholder for a very familiar feeling, you know. Oh yeah, it's like the state is the thing that drew us together because it was so weird and specific, and that is so many other things for so many other people. Oh yeah, yeah, you know? for sure. So it's like even though you may, the point is you may not know who the state is, but you know exactly what we're talking about based on right. You have a connection with someone in your life that um and you, that where you guys connected really well because of a thing you loved. And and Mike and I, uh, our thing happens to be definitely the state. But it's it's interesting too because it seems to me like in a in an almost like elitist kind of way. Or, you know, what, you know, how like, or like in a hipstery way, it's like you've earned a badge of like, oh, you, I know we'll get along and I know we'll be friends if you like the state and if you know more than mm-hmm. one sketch and if you like watched it when in your teenage years, you know, like there's all these like, you know, kind of elitist prerequisites to me that feel like, Oh, that's a free pass to be someone that I will get along with, probably because you watch the yeah, state. Yeah, at least you get a good. Yeah, you get a good first shot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you, you get a great. You're gonna first have to shot. do a lot to fuck that up. Right, 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 right. <laughs> After that, you could totally fuck it up. But if <laughs> you know, but the fact that you <laughs> enjoy the state means that there's something. There's this almost like a like a nostalgia kinship that that you yes. that you share and it's it's an interesting concept but you know whatever it's important for us to connect on those types of things because it makes us feel like we're not alone and it's fun and funny things are good dude and to keep making those things that might be that for somebody else that's right. super important too especially with everything that's going on i you know i was talking to a friend about struggling with being funny at a time like this and I was like, dude, I have the limited life that I have. And I think that the most powerful thing that I can give to somebody is m- maybe brightening their day with a stupid thing that I said. You know, mm-hmm. the fact that you have the chance to do that with anyone, give them that real emotional feeling, like all the people in the state gave us last night. Mm-hmm. I want to give that to, to other people. And I loved you know? how like – genuine and real their like kindness and their interest in what the fans had to say and and like they none of them were like jerks at all like you and you know you can tell when you've like when you're watching someone do something live it's really easy to tell if someone's like low-key a dick (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because yeah. you, you see how they behave when they're not edited or when they don't have an idea on how to like cut around those types of things. And so you can really tell yeah. when someone is like, maybe not a good person and you could do I mean, right. Like, you know what I mean? Going back to even music days, man, there was this there dude go. who I used to tour with. I'm not going to say any names because doesn't even have one Megan anymore. Megan Tonjes. <laughs> Megan Tonjes. Uh, no. Hey. And she, thank you again from the mummy. Uh, I He's remember a big Megan Tonjes fan. this person being really like shitty on stage attitude wise. And I, I talked to this person about it one night. And their response to me was, yeah, I'm not having a good time, but you go out and you play the songs and you smile and you give these people what you, what they want. And I'm so good at it that they would never know. And I'm like, first of all, they'll always know. And it just shows how out of touch you are with them. Second of all, I'm not invested in you and I know. So what makes you think, that a fan, somebody who has an emotional investment in you wouldn't look at you and be like, Oh, you're fucking putting on the wrist right now. Or you're like smiling through your teeth or whatever the fuck. Like, right. of course they know. Right. That was the day I lost respect for that person. Yeah. Because you have it as an entertainer, dude, that I'm not going to be super corny and be like the relationship with the audience, but that's, it's fucking, it's a two way street, man. Absolutely. 
as a stand up, you feed off the energy from people in any live thing. And it's so hard to fake having a good time. And then you have a good time. It gives everybody permission to have a good time. And we've all had to the best. fake having a good time and then we've learn. All- <laughs> we've all had to like, right. we've all been there. And then we learn that that's not a way to live. And I know that a lot of you can relate to faking, having a good time. Like, you know, even when you're, when you talk about your family that, you know, you may not politically align with or your, or, you know, in other ways, or maybe there were people that weren't in your life that are now trying to get into your life or whatever. You know, we know all those ideas of like being around people who you don't really want to be around, but you kind of have to be around. And so you kind of just, you know, do this or that, but those degrees of how those people affect your lives is where it starts to lead to like, well, now you got to fix shit within yourself to make sure that that stuff is, uh, cause it's unhealthy to like pretend to enjoy yourself. That's not a way to live. That's not, you know, you, you we all have the right to choose something that in that, that makes us happy and then follow that. And then, and, uh, make that the most important thing in your life or the most important things in your life are the things that make you happy. And if you have to like pretend to be happy, then that's never going to be okay. That's never going to end well. It's a big lesson to learn for a lot of people. And maybe your friend needed to learn that. Like that's not the way to like, not my friend. (laughs) Ex friend. was never my friend. Okay. Person. Maybe that's the way for this person. person. I was in the room with him. That time. Maybe that's that's what <laughs> needs to happen to that person who was in the room at the time that you could heavily sense bullshit from. Uh, yeah. Maybe that's what hap- needs to happen to someone like that. Is and you know what? It. Here's another lesson. The, the When you learn those lessons, you might have a completely different group of people surrounding you right. than when you were going through the lesson. Right. Because some people are going to bounce out. Right. Absolutely. And they're not going to be there. No one has to wait for you to make a transformation right into right, a right. better person and that's not their responsibility that's that's uh it's your responsibility. now it just sounds like we're talking about someone who we definitely both know <laughs> who are like who's sitting right here <laughs> yeah but you know what's you know what's funny it could literally be a lot of people. and we're <laughs> pulling for this person very much <laughs> But it's not, it's not like that. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever. We don't have to keep talking about that. But we can keep talking about how uh, the it was wonderful to see the, uh, the organic nature of the state all kind of just experiencing that moment of... Because of, they truly were shocked that, like, people were donating as much money as they were for the things that they considered, like obviously relics of a time that they cherish still. Otherwise they wouldn't have those things still, but they were, they were giving away like, you know, the state t-shirts and, and uh, you know, kind of like odd memorabilia from the past, from their past that truly would make a hardcore fan of the state really happy to have. No, but I had, I pulled my wallet out and I was like, I want to, I really want to donate and I really want to get something because I really would love something, but nothing they had was really like something that I know I would more love as much. Of getting. Well, I know that <laughs> yeah. there's someone else would love no, it way saying. more than I would. And I've got plenty of goddamn yeah, collectible yeah. shit, but, um, <laughs> but you know, we paid to enter. I mean, the proceeds that we paid went to the charity. So I was just kind of right. like, all right, we kind of did our part there anyway, but um, but uh-huh. they were truly shocked to see how many people were like, I and mean, people were throwing the fuck down, dude. Like people were like dropping like three K five K someone bought like uh, a jacket from a sketch that was like legendary in the show, but like meaningless outside of a state fandom for like $5,000 right. or something. Right. Like it was crazy. That's nuts. Yeah. And so they were really, the point is, is that they were, they were really, uh, what'd you say? 
Was it Doug's jacket? No, it was uh, Levon. Or it that. was either Barry or Levon's jacket. Whatever Michael Ian Black's character. Oh. Was. <laughs> yeah. It was like the jacket with the leopard print and the suede on it. Yeah. Yeah, and he yeah, yeah, and they yeah. were talking about it. It was really amazing to hear them talk about like pretty candidly their experiences with stuff and like straight up just being like MTV were shitty and things like that. But uh, they. Uh, it was interesting to hear Michael Ian Black talk about that jacket. And he was saying that like, it's literally the last, like they only made this one. And then the other one, there weren't like multiple ones. There mm-hmm. was Barry and Levon's jacket jackets. And Michael Ian Black had the only one in existence. And he was like, it was just in my basement, you know, like in a box. So, you know, l- let's, <laughs> let's do it. And then, but he kept joking about how he was really sad to give get rid of it. And he kept joking about how like, yeah, he, he kept joking about like, uh, like Carrie Kenny would be like, I can't believe the jacket sold for like $5,000. And Michael Ian Black would be like, yeah. And if it was real, I would be really sad about giving away this jacket. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and Tom Lennon played, uh, Levon or Barry or what one of Barry and Levon, I can't remember. And he wore the other jacket and the other, like, and he was like, it's gone. It's destroyed. I don't know. It doesn't exist mm-hmm. anymore. I don't know where it is. I mean, I think it's just destroyed. So it was like the yeah. last one ever, and they were like all really, really thankful and grateful for how people were just like throwing money down for these these things. But it's really special. It was wonderful to watch. Maybe that's how somebody's going to be for your headband someday. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? I would totally – I'd give away any of this shit to charity, especially now when people need it the most. Um, but you're right. Yeah. You're totally right in a way. Maybe we should figure that out. What's that? I said, maybe we should figure that out. I would love to. I would love to. I, I, let's talk about it. Um, let's talk about it for sure. But anyway, let's jump into some ads because we got to do that, okay. right? And, and then uh, I have something that I'd like to, that I prepared for the show. Hey. If you'd like. Awesome. That sounds great. The audience is very excited. About it. <laughs> Does, the mummy doesn't sound super into it. Mummy's into it. He doesn't really say much unless there's something worth saying. You know what I mean? I mean. He is 5,000 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for him to put any energy into... <laughs> Listen, give him a break. He's Dude, this is, this is how old. mummies communicated back then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this ad music going here. Oh. <laughs> oh. Dude, that's a king speaking. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh. Um, Mommy, how did they how did they build the pyramids? Oh, oh, oh. Wow, really? Interesting. Okay. Yeah, well, slavery is not okay oh. now. No, no. Uh, you don't have to get angry. What? No, so times have changed. How they got them. No, it's. Slave, no, slavery. You cannot talk about that. You can't. We're done. We're cutting you off. Not okay. That's enough for me. I mean, he's just go go off. <laughs> that's the hill you want to die on. Then you certainly can't. If you're, that's the hill you want to die again Dude. on. <laughs> Mummy has not adjusted well. No, guys, let's talk about me undies though. We love me undies so so much. I talk about me undies. Got a new topic the other day. Man. Me too, Mike. I really don't want to cut you off again, so I'm leaving a lot of room. In here. Um, I I talk about me undies in my personal life, even, because I've been dancing on my Instagram stories in my me undies underwear, and uh, <laughs> I get so many. I actually had actual friends reaching out and going like, "What do you wear? How, where are you, where can I get the? Where can I get the?" <laughs> What if I just died? You turned into the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> that was a cartoon. Look, you died like a cartoon yeah. train running out of coal. And then my eyes turn into X's and I go. Mm. I just fall <laughs> off. Uh, I'd um, be like, use the promo code banter at checkout. <laughs> use the promo code banter for Steve's funeral. Um <laughs> So, uh, but anyway, friend, my friends were asking where I got my underwear, 
and uh, and I gladly point them in the direction of MeUndies and gladly gave them the MeUndies.com slash banter code uh, to, you know, contribute to the show a little bit. But also, listen, if I'm going to be telling you about the most comfortable underwear I've ever worn in my entire, then uh, of course I'm going to be lobbying for them in my outside of my program show life. And remember, guys, it is Pride Month. Thank you for for clarifying that, uh, MeUndies. But it is Pride Month, and it's critical that we take a moment to recognize and remember the intersectionality between pride and the racial injustices that we continue to endure today. This month, through their MeUndies uh, gives, oh, through their MeUndies Gives initiative, MeUndies continues to take action to achieve their mission of creating a more thoughtful and accepting world by making $50,000 donations to both the It Gets Better project and Black Lives Matter. They, like MeUndies, are committed to standing up against hate and intolerance and creating a world where hope outshines fear for all people. With MeUndies Gives, simply by shopping MeUndies, you help them support this cause. That's really awesome. And I, I really appreciate MeUndies uh, joining the the battle, uh, joining the fight. Yeah. Because it's nowhere Getting near... something you need already yeah. from a great company yes. who makes a great version of the thing that you need already. And then using some of that money to help out great causes. Mm -hmm. That's a triple win. You yeah. don't see a lot of triple wins. You barely see them. Not, not since maybe around <laughs> 2012, 2013. So guys, I think the last triple win was <laughs> that Michael Jordan documentary. <laughs> and we can't forget the triple Lindy in Back to School. <laughs> Can you do the triple Lindy, Mike? <laughs> eh. That's enough out of you. <laughs> guys my i gotta be honest i talk i really talk a lot about me undies i find them very comfortable i'm wearing them right now i wear them all the time and their loungewear and their onesies and all their stuff their pants they've got pants and shirts and socks and like pretty soon my entire t-shirt underwear and sock and pajama wear will all be me undies stuff probably because it's incredibly comfortable. Even their t-shirts are incredibly comfortable. It's Steve, all Steve's got a me closet. I've got a, I'm going to have a me closet for sure. Um, but, uh, there's a me undies membership, which, uh, which is the way to go for sure. Where every month, the softest under undies ever appear at your door. The convenience factor is clutch. You never have to leave the house. Oh, and you also get site wide savings, early access and free shipping. It's pure joy, you guys. And we talk about that micro missing a fabric. big opportunity to call it a membership. Ooh, a membership. Nice. Uh, put it in the pile. I mean, you know, you never know. It's all about contributions. It's all about collaboration. Membership. You believe in the power. So guys, we love how comfortable they are and they are offered in a range of sizes from extra small to 4XL. And there's a great offer offer for our listeners. For any first time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. You got to give this super softness a try, you guys, especially because they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Mike Falzone's dying. <laughs> guys, to get your 15% off, your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. <clears throat> Go to MeUndies.com slash banter. That's MeUndies.com slash banter. Thank you, MeUndies. Great job, Steve. Thanks, buddy. Thank Next you, up, uh, we have Honey. Love us some Honey. Honey is very Do useful. you love your own money? <laughs> yeah. Do you, have, do you care about your money? I'll let you answer that. The answer is yes. The answer Shots for me is yes. Sammy Snows. I'm so shocked at the Sammy's chin. Is it what was it? Sammy's chin and whose nose? Sean? That's kind of that's gonna bother me now. Yeah, I 
can't remember. Anyway, guys, what is honey? Well, I'll tell ya. <laughs> honey is just a wonderful service that helps you when you're online looking for something to buy. You know how like there's a area where when you buy something it goes type in a coupon code and you always look at that. Do thing. you know that part? You know that part? And do you always look at that part like I do before honey? And uh, and go like, man, I wish I had a code or like, should I go looking for a code? And you're like, eh. Well, guess what? Honey does that auto magically. Honey searches for codes. It scours the interweb for codes for when you purchase things so that pretty much any time, every time you buy something online, you're going to automatically get the best promo code. And it auto applies to your cart. It auto applies. Which makes online shopping feel as easy <laughs> as it's supposed to be. <laughs> I don't think anyone has more confidently said an incorrect word. <laughs> Auto flies. <laughs> doubling down. There's nothing like doubling down on the <laughs> double down on the on the made up word. <laughs> double double down auto pies. Rewind auto pies. Auto pies. <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you right now. You want those auto plies? You're calling customer support and being like, um, the code's not auto <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, auto ply is going to be a word in the future for sure. I, I just, like it a lot. Um, all right. How does it work, though, guys? Well, when you check out, this little box drops down, and all you got to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds for it to scan every promo code on the internet, and then you could just watch the prices drop. Mike, you use honey? I use honey. <laughs> what if you freaked out that hard about it? Like, you're like, oh, let me see. Honey's here. Let me try. Let me apply these savings here. <gasps> Whoa! Whoa! Those savings! These these shoes are $75. Huh? Well, let's apply honey. And if I press this button, it automatically. <laughs> Zoya comes in. What the fuck? What's hey, going? what's your problem? And then I'm like, your birthday present is the problem. <laughs> I'll tell you what the solution is. Okay, it's honey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I when you throat. want your significant other to hear you make a sound out of your mouth that you've never made. Try honey. That's a great, that's a great tagline. <laughs> if you um, never made your lover yell, try honey. So anyway, guys, honey has uh, over 17 million members oh, and saved them over $2 billion in savings. That I'm a part of that too, okay? Mike also. <laughs> Name drop. <laughs> Did you know that Honey supports over 30,000 stores online as well, and they're adding more every single day? Users love Honey, and that's why it has over 100,000 plus five star reviews on the Google Chrome store. So, not using Honey is literally passing up free money, you guys. It's free to use and installs in just a few seconds. Plus, it's now part of the PayPal family, which is wonderful. We love John PayPal and their whole clan over there get honey for free and join honey. always nice to get a christmas card from the paypal, from the PayPal. <laughs> so get honey for free and join honey.com slash banter guys please it's very it's free you just click a button and it goes but if you go to it it really helps us out so go to honey join honey.com slash banter let me explain to you how ads on a podcast work you go to joinhoney.com slash banter. It helps the show, and it helps you save money. How about that symbiosis? Auto prize. <laughs> 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 Thanks, honey. <laughs> oh, man. Auto Dude, buy. I'd be so sold <laughs> if I wasn't already. If I wasn't already, I would be so sold. 
I know. I would love to see our conversion numbers on that based on the things that we just said. Yeah. You can't put it simple. Simple. <laughs> <laughs> you think, can't simpler it. I think it. I'm breaking. <laughs> Guys, let's talk really quick about stamps.com so I can stop reading things <laughs> and losing my mind. Guys, let's talk about stamps.com. What a perfect time to be using stamps.com. Going to the post office is a no bueno when you're in the quarantine. We're all in the quarantine together, guys, and we don't want to go to the dang post office. So for all of no, our sakes, we, don't. we need to avoid crowds. This thing is not over. We're about to get a big wave. You know what a wave is? Think about it. It's not, coming. <laughs> it's so hard to look forward to this one. This is not a wave that will be fun at the beach. We need to avoid crowds, <laughs> guys. But what if you need to go to the post office, huh? Well, what if you need postage, huh? <laughs> well, don't worry. Stamps.com is here to help. With Stamps.com... You can print postage on demand and skip those lines and crowds at the post office, guys. Plus, you can actually save some money with discounts that you can't even get there at the post office. As if that wasn't enough, Stamps.com also offers UPS services, you guys, with discounts up to 62% and no UPS residential surcharges. There's percentages off of mailing things, guys. That's never happened. That doesn't happen at the post office. Consider that, for God's sake. Stamps.com brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer in the safety and comfort of your own home, office, or anywhere else you're hunkering down right now. Whether you're a small business sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or you're just working from home and you need to mail stuff, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. You just use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. And once your mail is ready, you just leave it for your mail carrier, schedule a free package pickup, or drop it in a mailbox. No human contact, you guys. It's that simple, all right? And like I said, with those discounts, stamps.com, you get five cents <laughs> off of every first class stamp and up to 62% off shipping rates. Guys, that's a high percentage off of something, all right? Think about it. Yeah, it's higher than 50. <laughs> Stamps.com is a no-brainer, especially now, saving you time and money and keeping you safe in these crazy times. So listen, right now, our listeners are going to get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. You just go to Stamps.com, you click on the microphone up at the top of the homepage, and you type in banter. That's Stamps.com enter banter get yourself some help with stamps.com get yourself you're gonna some like help. the way it sends though you're gonna love the way it looks when you send things <laughs> it looks so cool you're gonna love the way they send dude i was telling alana about it and she i was like look and she was like damn that looks cool <laughs> I don't agree with her much, but I don't agree with her oh, a man. lot. But that one we really align with. Ken, you did such a good job with the ads, man. I'd love to give you a little break. Well, thank you. I'll uh, take it. If I could, and if it's okay with you, I'd like to ask. <laughs> there he goes. Never seen him move so fast, but there he is. Um, thank you. Everyone for joining us. It's been quite a time. Steve, can I get your opinion on a couple Hollywood ideas? Of course. I'd love it. This is a new segment I like to call Hollywood Ideas, where Steve tells me if I have a good Hollywood idea. Because you know we're all trying to break out. You know, you can't spend your whole life on the internet. You got to graduate to um, new uh, trend-setting mediums like the movies and television. Let me play some Hollywood <clears throat> music. How about like so a if little... you tell me that any of these are winners, I'm going to bust my ass to get a meeting. And then I'm going to tell somebody who's <laughs> going to take one look at me and wonder how I got into the building about this idea. Hang on. Let me see if I can find a good track here. 
Man, I want to know what you're putting into the search bar. I right put now in classic Hollywood music. Classic Hollywood <laughs> red carpet music. <laughs> okay, so this is a segment where I pitch Steve Hollywood ideas and he tells me whether or not they're It's called Hollywood Ideas. Okay, Please welcome the wickedly Hollywood talented idea one and only <laughs> Adele Dazzini. That's not part of it. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, a, Hollywood, a Hollywood movie about a famed vagabond named Scam Likely. <laughs> <laughs> a Hollywood movie about a, a famed vagabond named Scam Likely called The Calls Are Coming From Inside the Phone. The calls are coming from inside the phone. Yes. Dude, Owen and I had a funny bit we used to do where we'd say, the call is coming from... Oh, I think that's what it was. The call is coming from inside the phone. <laughs> Fuck, I can't okay, remember. Okay, so never mind. No, no, no. I love it so, because we were never going to do anything <laughs> with that. So let's turn it into a movie about a guy named uh, Obviously a Crook. Or whatever his name is. Scam, Scam Likely is his name. I love Scam Likely a lot. <clears throat> okay, this is the television, Hollywood television idea. Uh, reboot the show The Biggest Loser to be about people who grab their engines at stoplights. <laughs> Thank you. Uh... Okay, here's a movie. <laughs> this might be a little out there, so you have to be an honest friend and you have to tell me whether or not this has legs. Okay. It's a movie called uh, Where's My Where's My Robot? <laughs> and is my <laughs> really big? It's it's capital M, lowercase y, capital R O B O T. Where's my robot? So what do you have what that's about yet? Yeah, can I finish? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's a story of a kid trying to find his robot at a <laughs> He's trying to find his robot. It's a story of a kid trying to find his robot at a giant robot giveaway. What the fuck? When Toys R Us celebrates their... I'm not done. When a Toys R Us celebrates their 100th anniversary with a massive robot giveaway, young Timmy jumps to the chance of getting a new best friend. But how do you make an emotional connection when only one of you has a heart? Nicholas Hamilton is Timmy Stansler in Where's My Robot? <laughs> Inspi inspired by true events that I could see happening to Sam or Will. I love, I love it. I think it needs a little work. What do you think could be better? Um. <laughs> you met with some hesitation by the people. <laughs> I think it needs a little work. But I think we could turn this into a big, big movie. Where's my robot? Okay. And the cover of the kid is like this. Where's no? It's it's like this. It's where's my robot? It's like the Velveteen oh, Rabbit, oh, but oh. for robot. I thought when you said where's yeah. my robot, I thought every kid has like this. Everyone for Christmas got this really cool robot, and everyone's got a robot friend now, and they all go to school, and they got this robot friend carrying their books and shit but this kid didn't get one because yeah. he's not he's not rich enough to buy one well the i it was a giveaway if you'll remember toys r us bicentennial giveaway yeah i'm just right? workshopping so every, it with you. Every so i'm kid just fixing it you know gets, i'm fixing it and i'm me. telling you i'll get my goddamn eh. lawyer on the phone so fast it'll make your head spin eh. so at this giveaway all these kids get this techno robot and the robots are just like scattered in the parking lot. 
mm-hmm. right? And they find the kids. It's like they a pet. It's like when a pet find the fi- kids. like when a pet wants their master, they run to them. Okay. Now we're talking. I think it needs a little and work. So <sighs> my idea is is that every kid's got this cool robot that is their friend and helps them with stuff but this kid can't afford one so an alien robot from space comes and makes itself look like one of those robots but it's like exceptional and it helps him do even crazier uh-huh. cool things and then he ends up becoming the popular kid and then he realizes it's not about having money and having enough money to buy the coolest thing it's about friendships and love and about your dad (laughs) it's also about and i could see how you might be tugging at the heartstrings of some of the people on that one but aliens gonna come down and pretend to be something other than itself just to make a connection with this kid Right, and that's so. Is it a movie about hiding your true self? No, that's something that ends up being taught later on in the movie because the boy sees what he really looks like, and tells him that he made himself look like those robots so that he could have a better life, and so friends would stop bullying him. And the kid eventually says, "I want you to look the way that you look and be who you are," and then it becomes what it looks like, and then the government goes after it and kills it. And then the. I was gonna say, when does the ro- when does the alien kill the kid? <laughs> well, first he eats the kid, and then the FBI shoots the alien. <laughs> <laughs> Roll credits. <laughs> what if like the kid saying goodbye to his friend, like I love you, like an ET, I love you, I love you, I'm gonna miss you. He hugs him, and the alien just eats him, <laughs> just kills, yeah, him, murders him, devours, him, and, devours and murders him. him. And then it like, he got, and he then got it hungry. waddles back onto the ship, and then it takes <laughs> off. The family's like, ah, what but the then, fuck? <laughs> before the credits roll, it's just a shot of there's the spaceship, and then the spaceship goes out of the screen, and then it's just like a shot of the woods for like a long time. <laughs> Wait, like what if, 15 minutes. What if the ship takes off and it goes off into space and the family's just there like like in shock? And then um and then and then the mother goes like My baby! And the ship comes back and fires a <laughs> missile down on the family and then takes off into space again. The whole family dies. <laughs> the, the, the ship comes back and just really crudely like hammers the lady into the ground. <laughs> Or the ship comes back and the door opens and a burp sound happens and the kid's shoes come (laughs) out and land on the ground and then they take off. (laughs) Oh my god. All right. Go go ahead. You got something like that. Um, no, but I did just think of of your funeral. If we had to live stream your funeral. Thank you for thinking of it. And you have somebody up there. And you have someone up there doing the eulogy. I mean, like Steve was filled with life. Steve was a light to everyone around him. Let's see who's checking in in the chat. <laughs> Amy's here. Thank you for your condolences, Amy. Julia Fang from says he Star will be Maine. missed. Julia Fang, we got a super chat from Julia Fang. It says never forget Steve. Rhino Faroki donated ten bits. Jesse Stillwell said, what would you do if Steve shot up in the space from his casket right now? <laughs> Becca DeGoo says, hop oh, on my That's filthy back. All, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> um, Mike, oh, I love that new segment. So we should do we should try to come up with movie concepts and then pitch them to each other. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think it would be especially funny if we were to I have an idea that I want to tell you that I don't want to say on the show. Okay. Well let's say goodbye. I just to want everybody. it to be a special treat. Let's say goodbye <clears throat> Dude, to everybody. Thank you so the, much for uh, listening yeah. today. I hope that you have a great day after this. It's Friday, man. It's the second day of the week. 
and we hope that you're you're starting it with a bang. <laughs> and uh, we can't thank you enough hey. for uh, how much you like us. We're lucky people because you listen to the show, and that's never lost on us. And we appreciate you so much. We know it's been a hard time, and we hope that you're uh, taking it one day at a time and getting through it like the rest of us. And uh, let us know if we could do anything to help. I, ditto, Mike. You said it well. I can, I couldn't have said it better myself, and I really couldn't, even even in the whole world. Yeah. So, guys, thank you. That'll be three thousand dollars for Steve's <laughs> headband, and most of that will be given directly to a charity of your choice. You know, Will used to wear this headband a lot, and I had to make sure he wasn't going to snitch it or snatch it because he snatched. I remember headband, Will. Yeah, this is the headband. He he took it from me and started wearing it. I let him. I let him. That's nice of you. <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching the show. We'll hear it. We'll hear you next time. We'll hear it. We'll be here next time. We'll be That's here next sure. time. Bye. <laughs> That's our promise to you. That was